since we've been married for 10 years, we decided to come up with the top 10 list of advice uh, that has worked for us. Um, you might not know, but we are actually happily married and still enjoy each other's company more than ever. So, um, so number one is always compete every single day to out love the other person. This one's really important because I find that with selfishness, it can get in the way. And when you're always hoping that, that your spouse will do something for you, then you start to get selfish and that's when fights happen. So instead of being selfish, be selfless and try to out love the other person every single day. The second one that we came up together was to listen to each other. Um, sometimes it's hard to really listen to each other and you want to kind of jump in when someone's talking to fix their problems or to problem solve because you want to fix it. But the best thing that you can do is just listen to your partner's concerns all the way through and then you can have a productive conversation after. And then you can tell her what to do, but don't really because that's bad. Three is bed and your bedroom is not for fighting, so don't fight there. That should be your safe place and it's always best to, uh, if you guys are laying in bed and you start to get into an argument, then it is actually better to get up and go downstairs and find somewhere else that you can look each other face to face and discuss your differences there. Number four was, Dave suggested this one and actually he recommended it, was to go to bed at the same time, which is actually really important. And I feel like in our marriage it has helped a lot because I will go to bed quite early and Dave likes to stay up a lot later. So Dave suggested that he should go to bed with me even if it is seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night. Um, which is really nice. I think it's really supportive and we can spend that time together in bed and I can go to bed with someone beside me and Dave can continue to watch a movie or do whatever it is that he's doing. That one was a recommendation bed. because of a sermon that I listened to. The pastor said to always go to bed with your spouse and so I started that ever since and uh, it's been probably close to three years that I've been going to bed with her every, every single day. Now as she said I like to stay up later so I put in headphones and uh, have a little table at my bedside and I watch Netflix or play on the computer and she puts on an eye mask and, and earphones or earbuds Your or buddies. whatever. Yeah. yeah, so that we can spend that time together. But going to bed together is really nice because uh, you actually get to enjoy that time before unwinding um, together after a long day, which is nice. So. Number five, uh, every day prioritize quality time. This one is one that is incredibly important and one that I um, definitely struggle with but uh, I can see the amazing love that comes out of it when I do it um, so put away your cell phone put away your TV um, make sure that you don't have any other distractions get yourself a nice fantastic milkshake that's what Elizabeth and I have been doing lately is uh, enjoy milkshakes outside in the hot hot heat out here um, or whatever your drink choice is and then just spend you time together talk whatever that comes to your mind come up with hypothetical situations if that's what it is that is good quality time that will definitely help out your marriage even more important when you have children i believe but i think that you just got a puppy so also important to put the puppy aside and just spend quality time together too. So and what i learned is hanging out with your child or your dog and your spouse does not qualify as quality quality time so make sure that you have that one-on-one -on -one time the sixth one is simple, just say that you love each other as often as you can um, and that you can't say that you love each other too much, is what we feel. Um, along with that, research and understand each other's love languages. We're not going to go into a lot of detail with that. Uh, if you want to ask about uh, um, how you can learn about it, then uh, reach out to us, but you guys can research it and if you don't know what love languages are at all, then it's even more important to research it. Um, number eight, to be each other's cheerleader. So even if you don't necessarily agree with what your spouse is saying, um, continue to cheer each other on and then you can have that conversation off to the side each other um, with each other. But it is important to encourage each other and just cheer each other on in whatever passion um, it is that the one is taking. There's a lot of times when we're on our way home from somewhere and Elizabeth turns to me and said, I don't like how you said that. And I'm like, oh, and uh, it's actually much better because it gives me time to self-reflect because the way that she approaches it, but she was still um, pretty encouraging during that time, so it's really good. Number nine, communi whip. communicate respectively, respective, respectfully, that's the word, respectfully. Um, the one is hard, uh, so this one is really hard, um, 
because uh, you guys will find each other, uh, find a way to push each other's buttons. Um, to when something happens that you don't like, you often want to snap back, and that's a really, really hard thing to stop. Um, but there's nothing wrong with saying time out, walking away, taking a breath, and then when you guys are ready to go and discuss again, rather than arguing, you can go back and respectfully communicate. And then this one kind of ties in with everything to number 10, um, is as you may or may not know, Dave and I have a lot of differences, but um, I think that we do our best to respect and encourage and just embrace the differences that we do have. Um, I know for me, Dave's differences has brought better things out in me or things that maybe I never would have, that whenever would have been brought in out before. But um, yeah, in respecting and then just embracing each other's differences because you never know the path um, with a different perspective where it could take you. And then bonus one is uh, place God number one in your life. So marriage is two people becoming one. When you guys are two people, you are meant to be selfish because that's all you have to look out for is uh, yourself. So becoming one is difficult. It's a difficult transition. So make sure that you put God number one in your life um, before your spouse is even more important. And we'll leave you with a verse, Matthew 19, four to six. He answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate.